Welcome everyone. It's the Mike Tech Show, show number 876. On today's show, I'm going to talk a little about Kevin Mitnick who passed away, a Zoom.us issue for a client that I resolved, Glasswire software, Otter AI, YouTube Music, Open Shell Menu, and Start All Back. And a lot of these are from listener emails. So let's get started with Kevin Mitnick, the most one of the most famous hackers of all time. He passed away on July 16th and at only 59 years old. Um he his life evolved around the beginning of hacking, he, he, he was brilliant, but the phones and manipulating phones. But one of the biggest things that he was able to accomplish for his hacks was social engineering. And one of the biggest things he could do is talk you into giving him critical pieces of information that could enable the hack that he was trying to achieve. Now, after being arrested and uh, incarcerated for over five years, he, when he uh, got out, he became like a white hacker and doing security and, uh, you know, I guess using his skills for good. I'm going to have a link to the Wikipedia page. And there are four books that you really want to check out. His first one, which I read a long time ago, The Art of Deception, Controlling the Human Element of Security. And that exactly about the social engineering aspect. In 2000, that was 2002, 2005, The Art of Intrusion, Real Stories Behind the exploits of hackers intruders and deceivers i did not read that then i believe i have the audio book for ghost in the wires his adventures as the world's most wanted hacker that was 2011 and then his latest was 2017 the art of invisibility i also recommend checking out if you can get a hold of the movie takedown which is based on kevin mitnick and the character, it's a, a true story on how they captured him and how they uh, uh, took him down, which is a takedown, which it's called the movie. So check that out. I wanted to talk about Kevin Mitnick's passing. Next, I came across this mentioned. It was uh, an older issue of Maximum PC. And it's glass wire. It's software that's fr that you can download free that's a software firewall. And the link's going to be in the show notes. And it's just, you know, www.glasswire.com. And you can run this. There is a, uh, let's go over the pricing, the features for the there's a premium version which you can buy or the uh the uh, i guess the uh the free version and one of them is the recording for unlimited and that's what the premium does where the free version is only 24 hours i think that's the really the biggest element between the free but it's a way to see hey what is running on your system that's communicating with the internet and this is something you can quickly run, keep an eye on to see what's talking behind the scenes. What tools do you have that are hidden, that are installed on your system that you don't know that's going out and communicating with possibly bad sites? So give that a try, uh, Glasswire. Now, I skipped around on myself. I want to get back to solving the zoom.us issue have a client 
a couple weeks ago could not go to zoom.us and this seems to be a was a common problem that nobody had a solution not even zoom i thought okay something's blocking it right so made sure hey disabled his any malware any virus software uh, disabled uh, windows defender no that wasn't blocking it this is across all browsers We've cleared the cache. I've ran malware, deep cleaning, you know, anti-malware programs. We've cleared all the cookies, all the cache that could possibly be cleared. No joy across all the browsers. So I had an idea. I pinged the site zoom.us, got the IP address. Then went into his hosts file, which is, you know, Windows System 32, Drivers, Etsy, and you have the hosts file. You need to copy that to the desktop, then edit it. Now, his hosts file did not have anything in it. So there was nothing malicious. There was nothing in the host file that could have been, you know, redirecting it to a blank page or something. I put the IP address that I found tab and then the site zoom.us saved it copied it back to the original location and then you're prompted of course to give it permissions to be able to overwrite that host file did that worked on every browser it was amazing so i have not had a chance to feed the forms with that solution it is a workaround if the IP address changes on zoom.us, yes, that won't work. But at least it's a it's a great workaround to get it working because when you launch the software, it has to access zoom.us. So he could not zoom at all with this issue. And yes, we reinstalled Zoom. We re no joy. I spent a few hours trying everything to the point where now I got to get creative. This is a networking issue. Why can we not get to one site? But everybody, you know, I could get to it, but there were a group of people in the forums that could not get to that site, had the same issue. So wanted to share that. I have some emails here, but be, oh, before I do that, I got to talk about, this is great. On Thursday, the reason I couldn't do the show Thursday night, my client, whose wife is a professional photographer, uses Max, and she's working on her second book. The Money No Object, they purchased the Mac Studio computer that if you go to apple.com and you take a look at the Mac Studio, we're talking, it's a lot of money. We did the eight terabytes to be the, the biggest storage and you know, 64 gigs of RAM, loaded it up. He purchased the 6K $5,000 display. The stand was $1,000. You're looking at a total of $15,000 Mac I got to work on Thursday night and getting it set up. We transferred the uh, from Time Machine from her 27-inch older iMac. And then when the Mac Studio started up, it asked you know, do you want to recover from a, a, a backup or a transfer from another Mac? And yep, point it to the drive once I plugged it in. And a few hours later, up and running. Now, there were updates that had to happen when I launched like Adobe Lightroom. It needed some updates to go with the current OS. And so it did that. Uh, we, you know, we had to log in, had to get a lot of passwords because we had a test zoom and how to test uh the um uh, adobe acrobat and uh, uh microsoft office making sure all the software apps are working then 
plugged one of the storage drives, the external drives, where pictures are being saved, and that's an 8 terabyte drive that's almost filled. So, I, with talking to her and her husband, I sent them a link when I got home Thursday night to purchase a, an additional external storage device because she can't have, it's not possible to have enough storage because of the photographs. She keeps every version of every picture that's being taken. And we found an external MacAware drive that's 22 terabytes from Amazon. So I will keep you posted on that because when that comes in, uh, I will, of course, hook that up and format it and get it ready for the, uh, you know, for um, being able to save photos to there. Now, something I'm running into with Synchro on this system, which is our RMM PSA agent, I still can't remote access and I'm still it's still saying the streamer is not online. So what I have to do is bring my my next visit. I got to bring my laptop there and I have Synchro running on other Macs with no issue. Uh, but I need to bring there's a lot of security options. It takes a bit to get anything for remote access. Everything is an effort on the Mac where you you got to give permissions in several places in order for things to work. So it's 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 a real pain. And so I got to go with my laptop where I'm in my synchro dashboard and then seeing what's going on on the Mac and then making sure that everything's running cuz I got to be able to have remote access to this system. So this way I don't have to get in a car and drive. Luckily they're not that far away. So it's a 15, 20 minute drive, but still I'd be able to just jump right in and be able to re remote in. So now something else, cause I still use, I use instant house call, but instant house call doesn't play well with the Mac. So it's, it's more of a windows product and something I need it for a client. And I want to go over this real quick. When you sign into the specialist, of instant house call and if you want to turn on two-factor authentication then it's very simple uh, all you have to do is right click on the icon in the system tray choose security then multi-factor authentication scan the QR code with your MFA app, I use Authy, and then type the code from your app into the field provided, and you turn on multi-factor authentication for instant house call. So I had to do that with a client and walked him through, and that's working perfect because they have a sub-account for being able to access it. Uh, what, what else do we got going? Um, be, before I get into the the emails, a couple of the emails are going to discuss making Windows 11 look and feel like Windows 7. That system is now behind me. What you can't see because it's kind of dark, that's why I deliberately don't have the lights on. There's a lot of computers back there on the bench. We got a brand new Dell Optiplex that's going to that user that's going from Windows 7 to Windows 11. And, and that's why I got to make that look and feel for that transition for the for the user. We have a lot of laptop work recently where we've been wiping laptops that are being given to someone else for some business clients that they're passing it down or one's giving it to another client. And so that had, you know, bit locker and everything. So we had to, you know, wipe that drive, make sure everything's good, and then redid it with Windows 11. And now uh, shipping that back to our client. And they were a financial advisor, they are. So um, the w what's nice is we didn't even have to drive there. They were able to just ship it to us with a return label. 
and now we could just UPS second day back to them. Um, the client that's gotten the Windows 11 system, I have backed up 80 gigs of data from her system that wouldn't start. So now this weekend, along with playing with the different options to make it look and feel like Windows 7, I also got to save all that data back. So I got to put sync back on there and I can use sync back free for that transfer and then uh, set it up. I already have it on an external drive and copy them over. That won't take long uh, with USB 3. So let's get to some emails here and I'm bringing them up right now. And the let's let's talk about the successor to classic shell this is from curtis hi mike i was catching up on your podcast this evening when i heard you talk about wanting something like classic shell for windows 11 i think classic shell stopped being supported by its original author a few years ago uh i didn't realize that august 12 2017 says wikipedia but it continued to work even after that. The successor is called OpenShell. You can find it here uh, from GitHub or the latest version, which is the link that I'm going to have in the show notes. He continues, it's interesting that the doc doesn't mention Windows 11, but it does work. I've got it on two machines. One, a Windows 11 Home. The other, Windows 11 Pro. Thanks for the show. I am I always learn something. Regards, Kurt. Kurt, love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, that is top of the list for tonight or tomorrow morning that I'm going to be testing with that. This is from Pup Odd Tech. The best thing to do is you start all back. It has more functionality than the Stardock version of Start 11. For the rest of the system, use Stardock curtains and download a Windows 7 style theme. After that, it's almost indistinguishable from 7. That's awesome. So also, I'm going to see I'm going to try that to see what's, you know, what what the best is. Uh, I really I really appreciate that. Uh this is some advice from Bill Dwyer. Bill sent me a couple emails, and Bill, I got to get back to you on one of your emails uh, about VoIP. So I will, I will call you as soon as the dust clears from everything that I'm working on right now. Hi, Mike. You might want to look at Sophos AV instead of Malwarebytes. The client basically cannot renew it themselves. That's that is a big feature. You get a nice console and can set alerts for uh, the infections. Then you can remediate them for a fee. I always have them buy three years since the pricing is pretty much buy two, get one free. We use Sophos firewalls and they can work together. I had a couple of clients years ago that it actually stopped a ransomware attack on. I mean, I've had malware bytes stop ransomware. The, the server sent me a message that said, this workstation and all of its inf info, including name, user, IP address, etc., was trying to put ransomware on it, so they changed their access to read only. The users in both cases were prolific, were prolic fix in going to sites they should not and overriding the blocking just a thought uh, that that is a good idea and we should always keep our minds open to new ideas and new software and especially when it comes to antivirus any ransomware and I will seriously check that out bill uh I, I like the idea that the client can't renew which is very very important and uh, i do have clients that renew they don't realize they got to come back to us especially the break fix clients and 
they end up paying more renewing direct with malware bites than what I could have given them as a reseller. So that's very interesting. Uh, two emails here. One, uh, both, well, both of them from Taz, our moderator in the chat. And the first one is YouTube music. I had no idea about YouTube music and for free, you can store, you can drag your files and drag them directly to music.youtube.com and have them stored in the cloud, your files. Now, for me, I've created on my Synology a way to be able to get to my music anywhere in the world as long as my system's up, as long as the Synology's up and I have internet. But this might be something, there's a short video at the top of this link that's going to be in the show notes that I want you to listen to and see, is this something that might fit that you might want? And Taz, thank you very much for that link. I really appreciate that. Um, the next is otter.ai as one of the best AI resources on the net. And I have read about this. They have the basic, which is free. Then there's a pro version uh, for uh, individuals and uh, small teams who, you know, need more minutes and features. So you kind of have a limit on the free version. Then they have the business version and then an enterprise version. Uh, the, uh, it, the AI meeting assistant records, transcribes, captures slides, and generates summaries in real time. Oh, this is pretty cool. Join Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Google Meet to automatically write and share notes. So it's a add-in for your meetings and with an AI twist to it. So something to look at that you probably should, if, if this is something that you need, take a look at the link. It's going to be otter.ai for the link in the show notes and give it a try. That's one of the things I want to do here is make it where you, you know, give you things to things to try ideas. And that's what I, I love. Keep the emails coming. Very, very important. Uh, I, I just really appreciate everybody staying subscribed and staying connected to the show. Uh, please email me, you know, Mike Tech Show at gmail.com. You can also use that same email for donations to the show on PayPal. And you can send anything, any amount. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. I'll put it to good use uh, for keeping the show going. And with that, that's it. Hopefully, no problems. I'll be back uh, this Thursday night. And um, I'm recording this on Saturday because of everything I talked about that I was working on. I knew I would be tied up all night Thursday night, and I was correct. So that I was glad to be able to quickly be able to announce, hey, rescheduled. And you know what I try to do anytime there's a, a missing a show during the week. I try best I can to do it on Saturday afternoon because this is what typically when I have the time to, to be free to be able to do this. So that's it. Everybody who joined me live today, uh, continue to have a great weekend and I'll see you back here Thursday night at 7 30 PM Eastern time. Thank you. Bye-bye.